Yehovah Malak, Olam Olamat, Yehovah Malak, Yami, Rakis, Yehovah Gadol, Makarian Tios, Yehovah Erdanai, Yehovah Elohim, Kurios Tios Panta Kreta, Kurios Tios Pistos, Eld et Yehovah, Yel Emuna Yehovah, Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios, O Panta Creta, Baslios, Baslion Kai Kurios, Kurion, Yehovah Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal, Yehovah Elohim, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura, El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos, Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion, Kurion ni mahagion pantakreta, gadol, gadol, gebura. Yehova ishmal kam, Yehova shamma, el nakum Yehova, el nakum yapa. Natsak Israel, la shaker, gava, gava, triembos Yehova, Isus Christos. Panta Kreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Zaan Logan Ogar Tautios Dulas Desmios and Despotes and Jesus Christos Kurion 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 Hagion 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 Numa Panta Kreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Mora Rosh Nasa Elohim Elohim Derek Emunabakar Mishfat Shava The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful. Sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, Rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkano, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling entering ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory, understanding the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of the Lord my God. To know it is not just the outward appearance, but the inward thoughts of the word of the Lord of God to be revealed by Lord God the Holy Ghost which we shall learn and which we need to know because God the Father has given this great privilege for us in the church age to realize to be in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and to learn and to make known and to teach according to the greater insights of the depths of the word of the Lord. In Job chapter 36, as we read in verse number 3, as James Moffat in his translation, he gives this word saying that, I will now justify my creator from a wide survey of the truth. So this is the point what we need to learn as we were looking yesterday because the present Christendom have lost the importance of exegesis. There is no wide survey of the truth. 
the wide survey of the truth constantly demands day by day in the mentoring ministry breath by breath walking in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit to diligently search the mind of christ and that's very very important diligent search of the mind of christ is not possible until and unless you first go to learn this word from afar and as today under the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit we emphasize this word called to be rakok and the word rakok meant to say which is very rare or which is very much distant and this very rare and distant is nothing but pastor teacher grown up in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit as a scribe and as lord god the father would send his scribes wise men and prophets in the same way as the wise men were in search for the birth of the lord as the way queen sheba was in search of greater wisdom than solomon though he was existing at that time and he compares these examples to teach to us that even we also should make that great search a diligent search to learn the word of lord god and to make the things to exhibit and how it is by building up a wall of fortification a thorough distinction mark from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun we love to build a great mark of fortification in such a way that now we completely and totally rely upon the word of the lord so what is that renovation what we are going to have upon our brain the logic is very simple exegetical word that's called to be the wide survey of the truth and today our pulpits have lost such wide survey of the truth so they have come up to obey men rather than god therefore they are fearing men rather than lord god therefore there are no establishment of the churches in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit according to the great and unique standards of the word of the lord of a god which we have been told to do so so what are this confirming of the churches or establishment of the churches called to be epi plus sterizo and that word meant to stay to strengthen the churches as we look upon this great work of between paul and barnabas in acts chapter 15 he says that this people they wanted to go back and look the things what they have thought and how they have been really responding so he says in verse 36 paul said unto barnabas let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of god and see how they do the word to do is called to echo to have and to hold and to possess the doctrine what they have given so he says and barnabas determined to take with john whose surname was mark and paul thought not good the word not good as we look over here it is called to be me axio and the word me axio meant to say to think he is not worthy and today people would just love to come and worship the lord god in the outward countenance of his appearance considering lord god to be like elia when they say my god is father but they do not know whether it is jehovah elohim or adonai jehovah they just love to come and say the worship from the outward appearance the worship from the outward standards is worthy but here paul says not worthy he is and then they had the word says departed from pamphylia and went not with them to the work to the business and the contention was so sharp para susmas the irritation was so sharp 
between them that he says now they departed asunder one from the other and so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus and then he says Paul chose Silas and departed being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God and he went through Syria and Kilkia confirming the churches this is very very important word if you don't have a wide survey of truth you cannot confirm or the word called to be episterizo not confirming to the great word of the Lord of a God or to have a wide survey of the truth you cannot make the things called to establish and the principal theme of the church why God the Father has given according to the standards of his bona fide gift is very simple in nature to make every believer perfect and complete in all wisdom of the word of the Lord and establishing them to be the ground and pillar of truth where they would come to learn the manifold wisdom of God so in order to stabilize in order to give you you have to know the word Rakok of Job chapter 36 in verse number 3 so here you find this word which is very important for us when he says I will fetch my knowledge and the word fetch is called to be Nasa to lift so he says no matter whatever may be the pressures of life whatever may be the pressures of life I want to make my vigor and valor according to the great and unique standards of his knowledge and that knowledge is nothing but to get into your each and every perception of your thought depending your eyes upon the viewpoint of the word of the Lord that's very simple and if you're not able to make so then you cannot go so he says I will fetch my knowledge from afar off so the word what we call afar off Rakok. and what does it meant to say it is called to be a very rare or distant or to use the word remote and very rare or distant or to use the word remote it demands that you have to be a grown-up grammatias in the Lord without being a grammatias you cannot come to survey the mind of Christ you cannot teach them the wide survey of truth so here the word rakak which has been taken from very near called to be being far or remote it meant to say as a grammatias as even Paul was being told in Acts chapter 26 much learning has caused you to become a maniac so the word here much learning is again called to be grammatias and that grammatias as is what today the pulpits are lacking and thus the churches are not been established the pastors don't know why they are coming into the church though repeatedly he said in the book of Jeremiah I will send my shepherds after my own heart who shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding yet we look and we learn that the pastors who haven't known my word they have come to teach the word and that's very great pain for us to look as he mentions those words in the book of Jeremiah saying that those who do not know the word of God they have come to handle the word of God and those who do not know the righteousness of God or having the bona fide gift of the Lord of a God they have come to be over here so he says in Jeremiah 
in chapter 2 in verse 8 the priest said not where is the lord and they that handle me the word handle is called to be tapas so what is the meaning of this word tapas it is called over here as the hebrew says which is meant to say not having the authority so they don't have the authority and they open up their mouth and they try to talk under pressure they took hold of something by force you know how it is by memorizing and writing down in a paper in a book and trying to go to preach by taking those notes for example in this place you have preached those things again you would love to make it as a point and try to preach in other places but the point is very very simple though you are having the technology today to record and put in the youtube and preach the truth they don't want to use that so they hold it by force and the men who handle it he says they do not know me and today people are holding the word of the lord in their hands being not sent by the lord not having the authority of the lord to open up their mouth to talk about the standards of the thinking of christ and this man when they are entering into the churches you know he says in jeremiah 2:8 they knew not me and what is that we need to know about the lord what is that we need to get acquainted with the lord your every perception thought has to be bought according to the viewpoint of the word of the lord of a god so they knew not they are not one with me the word one mind one accord one spirit is what over here we find they are not one with me that right that that with meant to say wife and husband after getting married legally we meant to say they are not even still one flesh so they do not know each other so now they are called to be one body the same word over here yada in the greek oida in the sanskrit veda so here they know not me in the sense they do not know that god the father wants every believer to preach exegomai standards right from the beginning if you have been sent by the lord of a god you have been chosen by the lord of a god not refused but chosen you know the word of meaning refused what we find in first samuel chapter 16 in verse 7 it meant to say your blood is going to melt off in pressure refusing in the sense you will not stand so today people that trying to please men rather god so they do not know to how to handle if they would really know the word of the lord of a god they would say the word of christ could be confirmed or the church of christ of our lord could be confirmed only when the word of lord god is been taught dogmatically and emphatically with proper exegesis isagogics and categories with the right dispensing technique of dispensations daily day by day day by day day by day but these people don't stand in the prayer so lord god hasn't sent them though they may think they're worshiping elia but we read that word of first samuel chapter 16 meant to say god is my father they considering just looking upon the outward countenance or appearance that god is their father and they're trying to worship the lord but in reality these are refused ones though they may appear to look on the countenance though they may appear countenance in the sense how many people they're following them how many people they're listening to them how many people they're coming to know about them so the logic is very simple people would love to look how many people they're following but they do not understand a blind will lead another blind and both of them will end up in the ditch why because they don't have a wide survey of truth and you cannot find the wide survey of truth until and unless you go back to dig and take the word of the lord of a god in the original hebrew greek and aramaic Dear yeah, brethren, we came a long way of introduction. We shall we shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale and wonders of the great and unique word of my Christ. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming into the grace of Lord to learn the word. We pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten and to challenge us by this message. 
In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. So not having a very wide survey of the truth, the pastors, they have come to handle the word of the Lord. And you know how much cunning you are in this world. You cannot go to a dentist who does not know that he is well expertized in that knowledge. You cannot go to a mechanic in a day-to-day -day affairs where we do not know about the things pertaining to his field to be an expert, including your health. So in each and everything of this life, you want to make that which is perfect, that which is absolutely good. And the same thing, how much more Lord God would consider us the way to talk about that he demands the people who are having an expertise knowledge of wide survey of truth in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic because tomorrow the standards of the word of the Lord of a God being taught, the standards of the Lord's mind which has been exposed, the standards of the Lord's thinking which is in accord with the word of the Lord of a God as it says, nothing you shall add to it or nothing you shall take away from it, then how much more with careful intentions or with careful study of the word of the Lord of a God, you or I ought to survey the scriptures. And if you don't diligently search the truth, you're not going to become an expert. Therefore, the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit over here in this passage, when he says for us, in Job chapter 36, in verse number 3, that I will give you the wide survey of the truth by fetching you to the knowledge, and my knowledge, what I'm telling is not lie. He emphasizes for us the same things as we look in Job 32.8 to say that there is a spirit in man, inspiration of the Almighty which giveth them understanding. And being not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you cannot know, neither learn the word of the Lord. So how to come to learn the word of the Lord of a God? You have to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. How you can be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? Until and unless you are born again in Christ. So the first solution, the first key to any man on this earth, believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And you are given a divine invitation to live an eternal life, the life of Zoe, not Bios. And from there on, when you have been given this great survey of eternal life, you have to walk breath by breath in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, which indwelleth in you. Breath by breath. So this fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, can make us well qualified. This mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is our only mentor, guide, or truth. And as we illustrated for you, the 66 books what we handle are nothing before the eternity things what we're going to study when we go back home. Mastering the 66 books and to teach what you have been already practicing can be done only in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because as many have been led by the Spirit of the Lord of a God, they are called to be the children of the Lord, being led by the Spirit of the Lord. So here, after we die, in the sense being born again in Christ, being put to death, the necrosite, the all sin nature, we don't have still any longer of time to spend like a childhood. We don't have time to become like even a young man, but we have time only to become a spiritual fatherhood. Because the spiritual father, every believer which they have to grow up, is having an abundant life of peace. Because he knows very well his life has been in fellowship with Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. Therefore, he not only fears the things pertaining to this earth, 
but whoever fears, he fears. If there are any scriptures left over, not to be taught. If there are any scriptures, they haven't been properly expounded in the viewpoint of dispensations and exegesis. So he has that great will of God the Father to be fulfilled, which is the desire of Lord God. And thus he goes on to make disciples. And God the Father wants such rakak men. The men who have become scribes. And such men will be the standards of expertized men being sent by the Lord our God. And as we read in Jeremiah 3.15, I will send shepherds or pastors after my own heart, according to my heart, who shall give you, the word meant to say, to rule. And the word to give or to rule meant to say to give you the word of God. They're not under someone's rule or authority. They are under the rule and authority of the Lord God. Therefore, they are under serious responsibility called to be sharat. So in this sharat responsibility, what they do? Being under the rule of Lord God, being under the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is not that they rule over with tyranny or anarchy, but they rule over to give you the Lord's wisdom and understanding, to feed you with knowledge and with understanding as Malachi 2.7 teaches. People should come to the pastor teacher to learn the word of the Lord of a God. And since he directs the truth as per the word of the Lord of a God, he is not over here to rule over with authority, but to feed you with authority. And looking your personal lives or some other things of your matters, being counseled with the word of the Lord of a God, you have to set right your things. Because the way how you make up your life, Dear brethren, as in this great First Samuel chapter 16, we have many lessons to learn. When Samuel is coming to that place, Jesse, he says, have you come in peace? And the point over there we learn, the bona fide right duty of the pastor teacher. People may think that he's just an ordinary pastor. Indeed, he is an ordinary pastor by the extraordinary ability given by the Lord God in representing the truth. That extraordinary ability is the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the gift given to him, the supernatural ability to teach and to learn and to make mention of the word of the Lord of our God accurately. So here we need to learn in simple words that great supernatural ability, what has been given for us. That supernatural ability properly to be used by the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So we need to teach, we need to expound, we need to make the things according to the word of the Lord of our God. So having this great survey of the truth, having this great mentoring ministry of the truth, we need to dig and learn because of that great supernatural ability given to every pastor teacher. Therefore, in 2 Timothy 2.15, we have been stated, Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. The words paudiza, be diligent enough to teach the truth. And thus making the one to understand the burden laid down upon his shoulders by the serious responsibility. It is not just a pastoral tricks or gimmicks as the people they love to look. No, it's very, very serious responsibility. The Hebrew word sharat, what we find for the word minister, it is a very serious responsibility to serve the Lord and it is not any ritual way of practices as the people they're practicing today in the churches. So, dear brethren, not to rule with tyranny or anarchy, but to give them and feed them the word of the Lord. That's what it happens over here in the Samuel case. And they said, till they could get the man whom the Lord has appointed, or in the sense the last son, called to be David, we shall not sit to banquet. We shall not relax. We shall not enjoy the details of life. And why it is you shall not 
go to enjoy or have the banquet way of life because you haven't done the work. And the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit which has been given for us is to search diligently, is to make known the things diligently. As Samuel asks Jesse now, he doesn't ask God the Father. You have said the sons of Jesse, but over here we couldn't find him, so I'm turning back. Do not ask Jehovah Elohim. He asks to Jesse because he knew when God says a word, it will come to pass. He's not a man to lie nor change his word. So now he asks him, Are these the sons or you have any other? So he said, Yes, there is one more. And he said, Till he comes, we shall not sit down to banquet ourselves. And today people have lost this essence. Pastors, teachers are enjoying the banquet every day. In the details of life, not to banquet or feast in the word of the Lord of our God every day, but in the details of life they are going on to banquet. And to such an extent they have been banqueting every day that they have lost to survey the scriptures and the greater they have lost to survey the scriptures, the great they are destroying the church rather than conforming the church in truth. Without having the wide truth for them, without having the right truth for them, they love to obey men. The greater they love to obey men rather than God. They love to come up with every mannerism of doctrine. They love to come and teach that which is convenient and comfortable for those itching ears to be heard of. What the itching ears is pleasing, they love to talk and they don't want to endure in sound Bible doctrine. And that's the failure for us in our pulpits today. And they do not even know whether they have the bona fide gift. Therefore, he says over there in Jeremiah chapter 2 in verse 8, They that handle me, they knew me not. They're not one with me. They haven't been sent by me. They haven't come from the right hand of me. And the reason why we are having such a pain, we don't have any grudges upon the pastors. The pain for us is that, if not now, then when we shall expound the wide survey of the truth. If not now, then when we shall make up our life to expound and to teach the truth. If not now, then you think after you die, you're going to make up your life according to the standards. No, dear brother, you cannot. The only truth what you have is to do it right now. But in return, we have many things for us to learn and to make up our life. That which makes us to understand, the greater we neglect our duties, the greater we are far away to look, as Lord God says, I look inward, I look into the heart. Because he is great in strength and wisdom, as the word records for us in, Je in Job 36. The word strength is gebor, and the word wisdom is not wisdom, but heart. And the word heart for us in the pictographical representation it teaches, having a disciple-oriented one in your body, So the logic is very, very simple for us. As Lord God looketh into the heart and not into the outward appearance, he resembles first as a pastor teacher given this bona fide gift, like a disciple, are you coming daily to carry the yoke or the cross of the Lord of our God and become his disciple? And called to be worthy of his disciple, are you carrying his cross every day? And the greater you reject to carry your cross every day, the greater you are not going to become a grammatias. And since you reject to become a grammatias, you cannot fetch the knowledge from afar. 
you cannot go to give that which is in the wide survey of the truth. And since you fail to give the wide survey of the truth, churches cannot be established. The flock is been destroyed. So dear brethren, he emphasizes over here for us in Jeremiah chapter 2, in verse number 8, to teach that this people who knew me not, these pastors transgressed against me. They made pasha, they made a thing called to be revolt, or they have made a rebellion. So what was the rebellion they have made? They are opening up their mouth, having their thought process not fixed upon Christ. Their eyes are not fixed upon the exegetical word. They are talking the word of God, but they don't have the proper exposition of the word of the Lord. So their eyes are not being fixed upon Christ. They try to talk, they try to teach, but it is not in accord with the word of God. They may think that they are really quoting the scriptures, but they do not understand the ancient pictographical representation of the thoughts which could be learned by a thorough dedication in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost, not just living in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost, but rather a thorough dedication in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. As you Enoch walked with the Lord, so to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And people stupidly ascribe it for miracles or healings or tongues or signs or wonders. No, dear brother, and your tongue will become the word of the Lord when it has been called to be the tongue of the learned. Until and unless your tongue will become the tongue of the learned, being taught daily by the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, breath by breath. You cannot really be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Opening up your mouth as divine oracles, being seasoned with salt, exposing the mind of Christ, teaching nothing but the truth. And today in the present Christendom, there are no tongue of the learned, and yet there are men who are trying to revolt. The transgress, are you not thinking you're going to, you're, you're transgressing against the word of the Lord? Just open up your mouth. We can look in your thought process and we can find whether your thoughts have been fixed upon the mind of the Lord under the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, or you're just trying to illustrate the people with your sheer words of theology or your sheer words of teachings. So the logic is very, very simple. Transgressors, pasha, the people who rebel, the people who are making up their life not to be in truth are those who open up their mouth not having a wide survey of the truth, not having a diligent search. As we read yesterday about the word rakak, meant to say very rare. And very rare cannot be. Very rare, it cannot come to you. You cannot become a rare one in accord with the word of the Lord to speak the excellency of the wisdom of the Lord in truth until and unless, dear brethren, to make you to understand this point, until and unless you are in the vineyard planted by the Lord, and we read the two words, kanan, K-A-N-N-A-H, followed by K-A-N-A-N. -N. And this is nothing but you have to be a scribe in your vigor and valor. You have to be a scribe oriented in your vigor and valor. That's what we read the word, being planted by the hand of the Lord of a God. And there are so many great deep things for us in the word of the Lord of a God, as such many people are neglecting to survey the truth. Many people, not just few, but many. It's very rare to find the people who are going to preach according to the standards of ancient pictographical representation of doctrine, as we can find one word over here by James Moffat in his translation for Job 36.3. Very rare. People don't go to have that rockak kind of information. And the reasons why they don't want to have such kind of information, that they are not able to come out from the details of life. 
They're not able to understand the importance of truth, the fear of the Lord. If they would really have the fear of the Lord, they would go to really make up the beginning of wisdom by learning the word of Lord God according to the standards and details of the word of truth. So here he says, the people who transgressed against me, the prophets prophesied. These are the people who are having their mouth to be opened up as the seed inside, but these people, they're prophesying by Baal. And the word Baal over here meant to say that which is for them as good as male prostitutes, gods. So now he says further, and walk after things. You know, you're walking. The word walking is what you call to be halak. And halak is meant to say as disciples you have joined, you need to grow up into grammatias. So that's very simple, halak. So he says these are halak. How they have halak, how they have walked. He says in very simple words, as they became great like a disciplined mind as scribes. You know, scribes, what to say. These are called to be the PhDs in the word of the Lord. But these people, they're walking not to become PhD in the word of the Lord, but to become PhD according to the standards of the details of life on this earth. They're trying to become PhDs according to the details of life on this earth. And nothing else than that. So they're walking where? He says they're walking after Akariath, after the manor. They have built a wall of fortification and they're having in their brain to think over, to renovate over, have. After the things which do not profit. The word profit over here is called to be Ya'al. And Ya'al meant to say to benefit or to gain. And what does it meant to say? They have kept their eyes upon that which the word of Lord God says not worthy. So they are going to become disciples now for that which is not worthy. What best you can do by cheating the word of God, by not giving proper honor to the word of the Lord of our God on this earth? What best you can get? You think you can have a great name and fame by following the lies of this man, by introducing their uh, blind masks upon their faces to use the word because they haven't been properly expound to the truth. So what do you think? So let me also continue according to those standards and according to those things and let them have according to this life. So you may think these are the things that could be happening. But the point is very simple. So what for you're going to profit? The profit of the things, what you're going to make up? What they have been cooking you up to give? A good name, a good fame, a relaxed life, or a life that which is luxurious on this earth at the cost of not honoring the word of the Lord, at the cost of not giving that which is right and good to the will of the Lord. He says that do not profit, you're walking in such way. On this earth you're going to lose, and on the heaven you're going to be absolutely kicked out. And why we use the word kicked out? Matthew 7 teaches to us. You shall cry out saying, Lord, 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 haven't we did this? Haven't we did that? Didn't we prophesy? Didn't we do great signs? Didn't we do great wonders? Didn't we do the things? But he emphasizes in very simple words, workers of iniquity, depart from me. Therefore, he causes you to remember your iniquity in the same passage of Job 36, which you read yesterday. The iniquity wherewith you have not been found perfect. And you may say, how we can be found perfect? Revelation 3 emphasizes to the church of Sardis, walk worthy with the Lord. Have to walk worthy with the Lord, you have to wear or to be white. Lucas meant to say, pure in innocence. Brilliant quality of the fear of the Lord. Not just being pure in innocence, but a brilliant quality in the fear of the Lord. That's what he says in Isaiah 66, verses 1 and 2. I love to reside with such men who tremble at my word. Brilliant quality. Brilliant. You know, these people, they don't understand what is the meaning of walking in white. And he says there are few names over here in Sardis. They haven't defiled themselves. They're worthy to me. And their works have been found perfect. So he says your works haven't been still found perfect. So make up the things where you can make your works to be found perfect in the presence of the Lord. So now he says this, says to us that your works haven't been found perfect. So be careful enough. 
So make your things according to the standards of the word of the Lord. Make your things according to the will of the Lord. So don't let go the time of the Lord. And if you have not been found perfect because of your iniquity, I will blot out your names from the book of life. And these people don't understand this word. Iniquity has been found in you when he said in Matthew chapter 7, he's emphasizing for us the truth that we haven't surveyed the scriptures clearly. We haven't made a rakak kind of study. And in this rakak kind of study, we need to become the thinking of a scribe. Or to use the word grammatias, as Apostle Paul was been said, too much learning has led you to become maniac. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ teaches, I will send my scribes, I will send my wise men, I will send my prophets. He teaches to us this great importance of the word of truth. And if he's sending his men, or his pastors after his own heart, Jeremiah 3.15. He will not send them who do not know to handle the word of the Lord, or who are walking which is not of a prophet, but is going to send such men after Lord God's own heart from his right hand, the people who will feed you, feed you with knowledge and with understanding, feed you in the fear of the Lord, feed you in the mind of the Lord, feed you to teach to you the truth of the Lord. They don't have anything else for you to be fed. There is nothing on this earth which could be of a great value or significance or importance. As you fail to understand that you're walking not in profit. You know why we call that there's no greater importance than that? The words what you're sowing, every word will be brought into judgment, he said in John. But Lord God, the Holy Spirit gets your each and every word for the judgment. Then how much more against the blasphemy, blasphemy of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, you might have thought, and how much God the Father. And you may think blasphemy is such and such. No, not giving proper honor or place. You know, on this earth, if you're not giving for a great function which you have performed or for the people who ran that project and they have been successful and now when you don't properly give their names and give them proper honor for example in any movie or any other program or any other project you know that man will be absolutely become or he becomes depressed or in the sense he becomes that wherewith he loves to now develop indifference if you don't give him proper honor, that's what the human mind is all about. If a man, for example, you, you have done a great achievement in this life and you haven't been given proper recognition of that, wouldn't you be feeling sad? Wouldn't you be in a place to think? What is it? I have done so much, even my name has not been mentioned. I have been doing so much, they have not recognized me. And you love to make up your groupisms, schisms. And then you try to rebel. That's human thought on this human life. How much more it has to be for the Lord. If you don't give proper honor to His Word, though He has given you everything in this life, the reason you breathe is it. The reason you're living on this earth is easy. The reason you're going to enjoy the grace of the Lord of God tomorrow, one more day, is easy. Then how much more if you're not able to give Him proper honor, proper emphasizes of the truth? The man who created God, the man who created man in the image of God for His own, for his own glory, as he says in Isaiah 43, 7, He has made man for His own image. And since he has made man in his own image for the purpose of his glory, then how much more if you are not paying that kabod, even the word glory as we call it, is of very great importance. Because the word kabod includes, as we read the word salem and damat, the word over here for kabod, it makes for us to understand 
again to tell the word of Matthew 28, 18 through 20, followed by Matthew 13, 52. It says that if you aren't a scribe, if you are not becoming a scribe, having that attitude in your body to get every perception of your thought, then there is no glory for the Lord. That's very simple for us in the pictographical representation. The first alphabet over here, it represents the scribe. The second alphabet over here, it represents the body. The third alphabet over here, it represents the door gate, the tent gate, the, the tent gate of perception. So here he says, honors or anything that which is in accord with abundance or importance or respect, it begins with the standard that first you have to be a scribe. Matthew 13, 52, that's the scribe. And that's the scribe what you have to be. And then you have to make up your body to be molded up in such a way that you will get every perception of thought like a scribe. And that's the word rakak of Job 36.3. It has been translated for you in the English from afar. It has to be a wide survey of the scriptures in exegeomai standards. In order to do so, rakat, which originates to be being far, it says your mind is now like a scribe. And scribe are the people, as we read the word, who write the word of the Lord of a God. And not only just in your translations, but in the Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. And dear brethren, People may be happy to walk for their own profit on this earth, thinking that it's a great profit for them in the heaven. But in reality, they're walking which do not profit them. They're not profiting them anything on this earth. Just look. And that's the point. They're not able to profit anything. Now they die. They think they can be in the heaven. But you haven't given proper honor, proper honor for the mind of Christ, proper honor for the word of the Lord, proper honor for the truth in Christ. They haven't given that, so neither when they go back home, they will be claiming, Lord, Lord, open the door. But he says, workers of iniquity, the iniquity that you haven't walked with the Lord in white, the iniquity that you haven't done that which is in the will of Lord God. So he's exposing to your iniquity that your works are not perfect. You may say, Lord, I did signs, I did wonders, I did miracles, I did prophesies. He says, I know you not, in accord with fact and truth. That's the word homologio, I confess. Looking in accord with fact and truth of these exegetical standards of the word, you haven't become a scribe. You haven't developed to be that which is the right word of the Lord. You haven't become which is the demand of the word of the Lord. In accord with the fact and truth, what I'm finding over here for you. He says, I am telling you, I never knew you. And besides that, he says, workers of iniquity depart from me because... You haven't done the will of God the Father. So in this great passage of Job chapter 36, we have many lessons to learn. The lessons wherewith it can caution you and me to be very careful to open up our mouth in authority of the word of the Lord of our God and to show forth the thought process which has been firmly fixed in the will of God by digging diligently the truth. And the greater we neglect to give you the right truth, to make you to understand the right purpose of the word, the greater proper honor is not being paid to the Lord. And since there is no proper honor which has been given unto my Christ, the greater glory is gone. So the word kabod. If you are not a scribe, you are not glory of the Lord. If you are not able to get your every perception of thought in your body to become a scribe, 
then you are not at all the glory of the Lord. So dear brethren, in very, very simple words, we need to learn what is the great glory or rakak of the Lord. Why we need rakak? If there is no proper revolution of the word of the Lord of a God, a proper teaching of the word of the Lord of a God, there the people will perish. And if there is no rakok in the scriptures, if there is really no rakak for you, churches cannot be established because the things pertaining to the book of Acts, when we look particularly, whenever there is an incident for us to learn in chapter 6, he says, the way have the churches were multiplied. Uh, sorry, in chapter 9, we find this great one in verse number 31. He says, When the word of God was being taught, that's in very simple logic. So he says, When there was an edification called to be oikodomio, construction of the home according to the standards of the word of the Lord, and walking in the fear of the Lord and comfort. So first teaching, and then making up to walk sure in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And then having comfort, paraclesis, calling near or having to summon of the Holy Ghost, they were multiplied. And today churches are not being multiplied according to the standards of the word of truth. As we look over there again in Acts 6, 7 as well. The word of God increased, the number of disciples multiplied. It is not any ordinary person like a nominal Christian, conventional Christian, having to show forth in your land season 40 days and then go out to do the sins of this world as your pleasure. It is not such a person. Disciples, dear brethren, you are not able to realize or understand how serious we will be gaining our judgment tomorrow if you're not making disciples. If you're not training them up to become that which is in the right will of God the Father right from the beginning. Because he says, workers of iniquity depart from me, I never knew you because you haven't done the will of God the Father. The will of God the Father, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, followed by 1 Timothy 2, 4. None to be perished, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his word. Therefore, if you are not walking, he says in Second Thessalonians 1, 7 through 9 or 7 through 11, or particularly to the end of the chapter, he says he comes to take with all authority in his vengeance fire, in his vengeance, for his vengeance in a flaming fire, because he knoweth very well. And he emphasizes that you haven't got acquainted first with Christ, and second, those who do not obey the gospel of the Lord. So he's going to take with all authority, with all justice, his vengeance like a flaming fire upon you. So, dear brethren, he says, if the word is not been properly multiplied, if the word is not been properly increased, auxano, the word meant to say to grow. And do you think today the word of Lord God is growing among the midst of us? It is not the word of God that is growing, but the things pertaining to the temporary relief from your suffering is growing up. You want us to hear something that which could make you to follow, that which can please your eating ears. And you want to follow the customs of that country, called to be Christians yet, but not able to come out from the dark practices the witchcraft, necromancy practices of this world. So, dear brethren, you just say you're a Christian, but in reality you're not able to practice that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. So, in all of these things, when there is no proper word of Lord God being multiplied, the disciples can't be multiplied either. So, when there are no disciples, which have to be multiplied, then the purpose of the church is not been accomplished. And that's how Satan has been successful. And today this foolish man who are standing in the pulpit called to be diseased, flattering titles. 
they have been inflicted with diseases. Their body has not been chosen by the Lord. If they have been chosen by the Lord, they knew very well what a great life they have for Christ. What a great authority they have for Christ. If the body has been chosen by the Lord of a God, they build up a wall of fortification according to the demands of the word of the Lord and they talk according to the survey of the mind of Christ. And since these people, they haven't been in the realm of Lord's mind, of a Lord's glory, they're really going to end up their entire life being rejected once. And they just think, that they're really growing up, they're really making them up to understand the scriptures. No, but in reality they are not making them to grow up in scriptures. They're really not able to make them to understand the scriptures. Because they themselves do not know the scriptures. They do not go to the process of Rakak. And since they do not go to the process of Rakak, neither they can understand the scriptures. They try to come and give an example. But the word of the Lord of the God is so strong in Acts chapter 6 and verse 7. When the word was being increased, the word is very, very important. He says, Logatios. When it has been Oxano, then the number, automatic word, Artimos, of the Mathetias called to be the disciples, multiplied platuno to increase to multiply and then he says they multiplied in Jerusalem greatly the word greatly called over here spodara and the word spodara over here meant to say exceedingly great you know people love to increase the church survey numbers today by walking into the gimmick standards by walking into the standards which is going to cause them by miracles or by oil, by healings or for some, some, some sort of gimmicks or tricks. But they don't want to increase the word of the Lord because already your brains have fallen to the rituals of the black magic practices of this world. So what do you want? You just want now God to be like a genie. And you say... I have kicked in 10%. I have come weekly to the church. I have taken baptism in such and such way. So he would say, help me. Or he would go to say, I have done such and such things of morality of life. So you need to protect me. And being surrounded or making up your head or making up your life in such process, being inculcating your life in such manner. Though there is the word of Lord God being taught, people don't love to listen to the word except very few. And we are not worried because you are answerable to Lord God, not and never unto us. What are we? We just do the work and we go off with our standards. As the great wisdom in search Shiva came, as the people who love to take in having the word of Lord God in the fear of the Lord, as these people, several times in this history as well, when we look, which haven't been recorded in the Bible, because it is human's history, like William Carey and some other great men who would walk five miles a day to get the wisdom, to learn the wisdom, and to make according to the standards of the word of the Lord of a God. So these things, what we look and what we learn, they teach us desire to know more. But these people, they don't love today to have more of the word of the Lord. They have been blinded or been put scales upon their eyes to look that which is only for temporary relief. But not having a well-established or to use the word, peace with God, to well-established peace with God, abundant life of God. They don't want abundant life, they want temporary gimmicks, temporary relief. 
but not a never abundant life of the word of the lord they just never want that and that dear brother the things pertaining to the mind of christ the words of the lord of god are so pure and true and clear that we really can't spend our time in the search of lies because he teaches to us that when the word of lord god is been greatly increased or greatly multiplied then the disciples were multiplied so the same thing again he writes in acts chapter 12 verse 24 the word of god grew and multiplied oxano meant to say increase so in esther chapter 8 as well we look the jews had light and gladness and joy and honor and in every province and in every city with or sever the king's commandment and his decree came the jews had joy and gladness a feast and a good day and many of the people of the land became jews for the fear of the jews fell upon them you know when you're really walking in the word of truth there is no need for us to convert or have upon you the blame in country india saying that is a converting into christianity no Esther chapter 8 gives a very clear very clear evidence that when we have the fear of the lord and in that fear of the lord having great light of the lord that is the truth of the lord being expounded and then you will have gladness and joy and honor and because of this he says in verse number 17 of Esther 8 many of the people of the land became jew for the fear of the jews fell upon them because the jews had great joy and gladness and they had a feast and a great good days you know when the word of lord god has been increased when the word of lord god has been taught when the word of lord god has been given with great authority even the unbelievers would come to believe in christ you don't have that gladness or joy and honor in your heart because you don't have the light you don't have the light of the survey of the lord's mind you don't have that light of the word of the lord of god to handle in your hand to walk in the midst of this powerless and crooked nation generations you don't have that light and since these people they don't have this light no gladness no joy no honor and how would you become an example for others as over here in Esther chapter 8 they the people who were not jews became jews because of the fear that fell upon them and what was the fear the fear of the jews it is not the fear of yehova and that's what you have been said walk by example lead by an example the people who are unbelievers around you they may see your good works and praise god your greater works in christ and they may praise the lord of a god he says in the gospel of matthew the good and great works of christ if we don't do now then when so dear brethren we need to learn what are the good works what is that great light what is that great joy so the good works are nothing but revelation chapter 3 fulfilling the will of god in the light of the lord what is that light the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit being expounding to you the scriptures by the pastor teacher who has been well trained in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit to become a scribe so in very very simple words dear brethren we have been given to shine forth through our lives the fear of the lord and then there would be great joy great gladness great honor and the greater you reject to learn about this great joy great honor great gladness unbelievers will not come to believe in Christ but today people are coming like unbelievers to the flock because they want to have some miracles not with a true conviction of their heart on based upon the truth 
If, however, or wherever they would love to have some miracles or healings, that's it, and they just want to continue in the details of life on this earth, but they never want to make up their life according to the standards of the truth. The prescription demands, when we look, the men who have been healed in the work of my Lord, He came to save them forever. Not that again they are not going to die, even the tombs which were resuscitated after, till the point of my Christ, as we look in Matthew chapter 27, they went along to preach and afterward they went back. They did not live long. So the same thing over here. Though you may be resuscitated, one or, find, one or the other find you're going to die. So no matter how much you're going to get resuscitated in the standards of this world, how much more you want to be still into the works of this world and die. Because if you are not able to make up your life according to the standards, which are the prescription demands of great joy and gladness and honor in your heart, Really, dear brethren, unbelievers are perishing at your cost of your ignorance and arrogance and indifference towards Bible doctrine. And tomorrow, the ways which you are walking which do not profit you because of the silly, stupid ways of your life, losing such great souls, every believer or every unbeliever or every human being in the image of God being made, that soul, when they have been perished, because you haven't sought of light, you haven't lived in light, you haven't thought of light. And since you are not having this great light, you are not having this great work, you are not reflecting as a light, as a light luminaries to be shined in the midst of this perverse and crooked nation generations, since you are not having that in your life, the souls of unbelievers are perishing. In fact, indeed, even the souls of believers which could be rarely saved if they are not righteous in the sight of the Lord, being made righteous, having to follow the work of the Lord, not to blot out our names from the book of living, the will of the Lord, the glory of the Lord, having to do this, having to make them, and having these things not in your life, he says, the souls are perishing because you don't have that abundant life of peace. You don't have an assurance that your names have been recorded in the heaven. You're not having that confidence where we can live in accord with the word of truth. Having not such things in your life. Unbelievers also will look at you and they will laugh at your calamity. Far less they could believe in the Lord. But when there is proper word of Lord God being multiplied, when there is proper standards of the mind of Christ being taught and established, then the churches will be established. Then we can make a path to walk according to the demands of the word of the Lord. Then we can make up our life according to the standards of the truth and honor of the Lord. And we don't do this and we expect something great to happen in our life, which is no way possible. So he says, if the unbelievers could be saved, first shine forth your light, show forth your gladness, show forth your joy and honor before the Lord, and the fear of the Jews as it fell upon the time of the Esther, Jesus Christ our Lord being the same, yesterday, today, and forevermore, and since they don't change, And since the fear of the Lord of our God will fall today as well, because He is the same, and He wishes none to be perished, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of His glory. That's what His will is, Telema will. And since He's going to do so, He doesn't want anyone to die, sin unto death, or perish from eternal life. So since it is His will of life, His glory of life, what we have. He emphasizes, let's shine, show and forth to them the joy, the gladness and honor. You know, he says in First Corinthians chapter 6, 
Is there not wise men among you, the men who have been absolutely in the perfect standard, to give you the knowledge of the fear of the Lord, far less you go and stand before unbelievers to clear your matters, the civilian matters or criminal matters? You know, I have fallen from such a place where the name of my Lord God has been no longer honored, but it has been countered blasphemous. And they have left behind such kind of a testimony in this world that they are easy and they are very well talking about to say that Christianity is good, but Christians are worst. How could they know the joy, the gladness and honor if you are not in the light? How could you get into that light if you are not carrying your cross every day to learn the word of the Lord and serve with the things according to the mind of Christ? How? In the sense of rakok. Therefore, where there is no proper revolution of the word of the Lord of a God, there the people will perish, says the word. So having to perish, you are trying to live a life among unbelievers at the cost of to try to walk in a way that do not profit you. The pastors are cheating the word of the Lord of a God. They think they can have profit in this life. What profit you can have? The profit which has been in accord with the standards of this world. And since you are having such profit in the standards of this world, you are thinking that's a great success. You know, the men on this earth is trying to make everything that could be well settling to have the things pertaining to his children, his life, his wife, his family. So in each and everything, they are so much happy to talk about that they are happy, having happiness to settle. They say, I have one daughter left over to get married. If I could get a very good um, husband for her in the sense who has been well settled, you know, having to be a government employee and he has all the things with him. So what next? If my daughter is also get married, I will be settled. The only difference is that animals don't think in such a way as man thinks. And they don't understand man has a rational soul. He has been made in the image of God for the glory of God. So in each and everything they think the profit on this earth is to become a name and fame on this earth and to say that they have lived a good life, they have established a well property, they have did this, they have did that. <laughs> but the unbelievers haven't looked upon your light, haven't known your gladness in Christ, haven't enjoyed the great joy in Christ, what you can enjoy with or without the details of life. Because you're going to honor Him. And what details of life we need when the heaven and the earth belongs to God. Whatsoever He willeth, to whomsoever He willeth, He can give all these things. And if the earth knows you and, if you, and if the heaven doesn't know you, what is the point of living a life among the midst of his unbelievers at the cost of walking in a path which does not profit us? Knowing not the word of Lord God will not profit you. Handling not the word of Lord God according to the demands of the word of truth, they will not profit you no matter whatever it is. You just take it granted, dear brother. The people who handle me, who, who knew not me, they handle the word. And he says, these are not my pastors. See, unbelievers are not getting to look what is Christ, because you believers are not first fully grown up as Christ. And since you haven't known Christ, haven't learnt about Christ, Unbelievers are perishing at your negligence. At the negligence of the flattering title so-called pastor teachers who don't go to give a wide survey of truth. The word rakak ministry is gone in our pulpits today. They don't want to fetch the knowledge from afar. 
They want to eat the food which has been chewed out by other person, but they don't want to munch the raw material from themselves and to taste and tell the truth. Though all taste buds are not the same though, but the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is the same and it will constantly guide you and lead you to establish the truth. So dear brethren, how much the life we are living to blasphemy Lord God. That's why the psalmist says, For the wicked in Psalm 58 in verse number 8, Like a slain they perish. The way how the snail goes on to leave behind its mark. So I wish, Lord, this should be the aborted ones. They do not see the sun. They do not look into the thought of the renovation of the process of the mind. And since they don't go to have the thought of the process of renovation in their mind, they fear men. And since they fear men, they love to please men rather than fearing Lord God. And since they fear not Lord God and please men, the word of Lord God has not been multiplied. Therefore, your name has been blasphemed rather than honored and glorified among the Gentiles. And the reason is because you have rejected the truth. You have absolutely rejected the truth. Dear brethren, in the time of Esther chapter 8, there could be unbelievers who could have the fear of the Jews and they failed and they came to become Jews in Christ. Then how much more today, being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the unbelievers will come to believe in Christ when we walk in accord with the truth. So he says over there in Zechariah chapter 8, Thus said the Lord God in verse 20, the Lord of hosts, It shall let come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. The word speedily meant to say as disciples, let's grow up into grammatias because the time is short. The problem with the English is that they have translated the best word they can be, but it doesn't give you the essence. The speedily doesn't mean to say you run or you go on your walking race. No, the word speedily, it's very, very simple. It meant to say that you have to be joined as a disciple and you need to grow up into grammatias. That's the word speedily. And if you're not a disciple growing up into grammatias, then you are not going speedily. And what a great sad thing it is for us that you have been in the midst of the people who are not even able to stand, far less you think they are walking, and far less you can think that you are walking speedily to be in the presence of the Lord. Dear brethren, the logic is very, very simple. Speedily they love to walk. And the point is, you are not speedily walking in the Lord. You are not at all standing, far less you can think you are walking speedily. And the point is very clear, dear brethren, because you are not disciples carrying up your cross every day to become grammatias in the Lord. You know how much you are rejecting the word of the Lord, so much you are destroying not only your name but also the name of my father in heaven because the Gentiles will come speedily if you are a scribe grown up and if you are teaching the right word of the Lord of a God the Gentiles will come speedily they will become grammatias joining as disciples such is the kingdom of God Matthew 13 52 and that is a great commission given for us in going to fulfill the great will of God the Father. Not that with a flash of a second God the Father can evangelize the world, world and make all the people to become believers in Christ. But for the test which has been given for us, whether we will stick to the truth or not, like the test between David and Goliath, whether he will challenge in the name of the Lord of a God or not and say the battle will belong to the Lord and he goes to fight the battles of the Lord or not. Not that Christ our Lord of a God within the blink of your eye, the flash of a second, 
a million of a second. He can make every knee to bow, every tongue shall confess, as he said. Know you not, if I would pray to God, he would send his twelve legions of angels. And one angel is enough to destroy one like 85,000 men, mortal men. So dear brethren, here we have to learn this word. Why God the Father wants to go and make disciples of all the nations? Why God the Father is emphasizing for us to make them to come back to become speedily the things pertaining to walk in the fear of the Lord? Why? Why does He want you to become Yalak? Because He has given us this test in the ability of Lord God the Holy Spirit to put us into test. How much are really working out when he cometh to look in the first tower, the second watch, the third watch? How many of them they are really faithful in engaging themselves, as he says about the talents, business, the ten out of ten, the five out of five? And the one who had won, he just digged and kept it. And he says, put him into outer darkness. So, dear brethren, Speedily, the unbelievers should come by looking upon your conduct. That's not the words that we speak. It's the holy manner of life, the practical holiness of life that makes a lot of difference. And that practical holiness of life should constantly reflect light in us. Should constantly make others to know the joy, the gladness and the honor that we're going to get in Christ every day. So, dear brethren, the fear of the Jews fell upon them in the time of Esther 8, and they came to believe in Christ. And what about you and me today? Not that you are here to do some great wonders or miracles or signs so that the people can fear you. As the people in this world, they fear about this necromancy, the witchcraft, and they say, why we need to mingle up, or why we need to get up on our things in this life in such sorts of demonic activities and the fear no we are not talking about that fear we are talking about the fear that we walk in righteousness the fear we walk in abundant peace the fear that we are being led by the spirit of lord god to be the sons of lord god such fear which has to fall upon them and what a stupid way of life these people they are trying to live dear brethren wake up the mind of Christ is so clear and true for us. Speedily, they will be the disciples. They want to be the disciples. They want to be the standards of the word of truth. It's not just the English speed, but called to be the word halal. And what for they come? They come to pray. And what they pray, the Hebrew word over here, it is called kala. And the word kala over here meant to say, they build a wall of fortification in such a manner that now they know very well that they are going to be making disciples. In the word of the Lord of God, day by day they build a wall of fortification in such a life, in such a path, in such a manner, that they will go on to make disciples. They will go on to do that which is right and good as disciples in the mind of the Lord. So, dear brethren, here he says, they come speedily to pray before the word called Pani'im, the Lord, and to seek. The word seek over here, Bakash, and it meant to say over here, to desire, to require, what? To make up their body from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, to talk about the thought process of the word of the Lord, to teach about the thought process of the mind of Christ. So that's what these people, they have been told. They love to desire, they love to require, they love to bakash. And the word bakash, as we find for us, he emphasizes that in their body, from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, they have established a thought process, a thought process which is in accord with the word of truth. So they say, let's go and seek and then furthermore he says after seeking the Lord of hosts I will go also the word go again as disciples join growing up into grammatias 
I will go and make disciples of all the nations. I will go also, he said. And that's the point what these people are not able to understand today. They want to become disciples growing up into grammatias, but you morons of Christianity called to be disciples joined and growing up into grammatias, opening up your mouth in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, talking and teaching nothing but the truth of the word of the Lord. You all have rejecting the Christ. You are rejecting the will of the Lord. You are rejecting the glorious mind of the Lord. Dear brethren, you are really not able to make up your life before unbelievers. Why does the name of the Lord of a God is blasphemed among unbelievers rather than from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, the name of my Lord God has to be praised and honored. Rather than that, why these people they are making to become blasphemous is that they don't have light in them to enjoy the gladness and the joy and the honor of the Lord of a God in them. So they don't have that great things for them in Christ. And since they don't have that great joy or great happiness, because they don't have the light, they perish. And in the meantime, they perish, they perish by dishonoring the name of the Lord, our God, among these Gentiles. They're perishing to the cause. And to such an extent they're perishing that they're not even bothered. That the name of my Lord God has been blasphemed. So they change guards as the number of cities they have guards that are changing their guards. And yet they haven't changed, it says, who the unbelievers, but the believers have changed guards without the number. Therefore they practice to the standards of life. And they consider this lies is the truth. And they think they're walking for the prophet. They may be walking for the prophet for the details of life. But before the presence of the Lord of a God, they are walking for their own eternal destruction. So, dear brethren, the pastors who know not my Lord, they love to handle the word of the Lord. The prophets having in them the seed of the word of the Lord are prophesying by lies, called to be the male prostitutes divine. And the people who have to fear the Lord of a God are fearing men rather than Lord God. How will the churches be established if you are still looking into the countenance of your appearance, saying, My God is Father, and crying out, Abba, Father, having to think your countenance is a pleasing one, and in that countenance you can do great many things? No, you cannot. Your countenance is not that which could be pleasing to the Lord. It's what your heart, if your body is not being prepared to become the disciple of the word of the Lord of a God and do the things pertaining to the mind of the Lord of a God. Dear brethren, we are really not being chosen by the Lord. If you are being chosen by the Lord, you have to make up your body to be a wall of fortification according to the right teachings of the mind of Christ. Because unbelievers are eagerly waiting. That's what we find in Romans 8, 16 through 19. The creation is awaiting for the manifestation of these adult sons, the Huyos sons. And who is that creation? As we look, the unbelievers over here. They are saying, let us go speedily. Let us go seek our Lord of a God. Let us walk in his paths. 
Let us darash to open up our mouth in the thought process to the demands of the word of the Lord from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun. Because these unbelievers, they are trying to understand, which will be over here in Zechariah chapter 8. These unbelievers will be making up their life to seek the truth. And since God the Father, it is not that He cannot know or He cannot change, but rather He knows everything. He can make everything happen to come to pass. He has put you in test. Your interest, as, Je as Moses was put to test in the time of Exodus in Numbers 14. With you I will make a great generation. He was put to test. He said, Lord, the promise which you have given, it will not change. You are not a man to change your word. Testing the integrity and the caliber of Moses over there, he gives us a lesson to learn. That he is going to put us in the same test. The same test what we have for us every day. The great commission to be fulfilled in going and making disciples of all the nations. Such a great test we have been put. But you people are foolishly wasting out your time in silly stupid details of life. In search of pagan kind of men who love to search for their lives. If you don't graduate, if you don't become, then how would you pass the test? Test is not given to the people who are small kids. And that we meant to say, who are not capable of carrying this burden. Test is put for the people who are well mature, who are well prepared. You know the same exam you can look. Examination is kept for all in your school or college standards. Those who are well prepared, they, fly, they, they pass out with good marks or flying colors. And there will be people who are not well prepared, they will fail. So they cannot pass. In order to pass with the flying colors by representing each and everything with the great significance of the knowledge of that subject, is what a grown up into grammatias in the Lord. You're well aware about the details of the word of the Lord. You're well aware about the demands of the word of the Lord of God. So the logic is very simple. The one who has been well prepared, he would be waiting for the test. And he wants to promote or upgrade or he wants to advance if he's been well prepared. But the one who is not well prepared, he still wants excuses. He, wa he still wants the time. He still wants to tell many things. At the same time, he will be a failure. Executing the great commission of the Lord God and the will of Lord God is as good as you are well prepared day by day to become like a grammatist, learning the word of the Lord God, understanding the mind of the Lord God. That's well prepared. That's the test. But as you can find in your own class, people who are not having that same brilliance of EQ or IQ, they're going to fail. Because they're not well prepared. The same thing you're doing today in this life. Every day it's a test. Being well prepared, two hours, 40 minutes. You need to be so much well prepared in the standards of this truth. That you can easily face the challenges. Every day you have been trained, first two hours, 40 minutes. Why? Because you have to give the time, the tithe of the time, of the word of the Lord of God. Not your income. Why? Because the greater you have been well prepared to know the word of the Lord, to prepare yourself, the greater you can face the world to honor the Lord God. Because Satan being blinding the eyes of these people so that the glorious gospel of my Christ shall not shine forth. It has surrounded their eyes with blindness. 
so that now you come there and teach them the great truth in Christ, the great enjoyment in Christ, the great reality in Christ. That's what you have to learn. And since you have been growing up in Christ and understanding the truth in Christ, the life of your test is of a great value and you learn many things from that. So, the unbelievers can walk speedily. Unbelievers can talk and come in search of the fear of the Lord in fulfilling the great commission of my Lord as you have been called over here to be led by an example. But we know very well, Satan will not make it to happen. Therefore, we should be not ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan. So, Satan tries to erupt up many things. You will not even be aware, but it is going to come up as far as possible. So you should be all the time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not giving place to the devil, but rather resisting the devil. And that's how the people are. They don't resist the devil. They are not having a great thought. How and where and when Satan will love to come and ignore. And allow to destroy your every thought. You know, the inspiration is the music, the rattling sound to divert your mind. Even while they are recording these things, you may have some disturbances. Those sounds may divert your mind. That's how Satan goes to be so. That's why Christ our Lord of a God, we used to go in an isolatory place, a place where there was no disturbances. The same thing we need to follow to be well prepared day by day in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. To learn the truth, to know the truth, because our life is for truth. We have been called to pass this test. The test first shining in the light and then making the unbelievers to know the gladness what we have, the joy what we have, and to have the honor what we have. And since we are not having this, since we are not able to make it up this, the people are not able to understand to pass the test in the wide survey of truth what they can learn in the fear of God, not in the fear of man. So the unbelievers, when they are saying, speedily we shall come, we shall search, we shall walk. Then what about the fate of these believers then? So dear brethren, he emphasizes over here, saying that, this man, when they have come up, they would walk and many people and strong nations will come to Bakash, the Lord. Many nations and many people. It might be in the millennium. Even as such, today we find where there is a proper fear and execution of the will of God the Father. People will come to know Christ because Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ said, No one can give you the peace as Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ can give you that peace. No one can give you that peace. The peace which Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, alone can give that. John 14, 27. No one can give that peace. And having such great peace for us designed by the Lord, no one on this world can have that peace, that joy, that assurance, that confidence, that we have been sealed and been kept into the book of life until the day of redemption. Just imagine your life having to live after death in heaven because you have been found passing the examination and found faithful in carrying the work and the will of God the Father. Just imagine a life like that because your names have been recorded in the heaven, because you are doing the works of the Lord, your works have been found perfect, you are walking in white, and that's the great worthiness of the Lord of a God. Just imagine your life. 
in such a standard, just imagine how great the things would be for us, how great an impact of life could be for us. And you know, since your names have been in the heaven, you are from heaven as heavenly citizens. Philippians chapter 3, before the foundation of the world, kept to be holy and blameless. Ephesians 1, 4 through 6, called to be with the survey of the Lord of a God, or to say the word, Ephesians 2, 7, which says, falling with the ages to begin one with the another, being kept to sit in the throne of the Lord of a God with God. Just imagine your life in such a path of the things. And now you try to sin in this world. Would you do that? The problem is that you haven't made sure your calling, your election. Therefore, you have not been yet risen with Christ. Since you have not been yet risen with Christ, you seek those things which are on the earth but not in the heaven. Therefore, you touch, you handle, you taste. In simple words, you are all in nature to be mingled up with the details of life. That's what you're doing today, dear brethren. You're making up your souls to get mingled up with the details of life. And such as standards of life you have been mingled up that you're not able to separate or differentiate between the true worship and the false worship. The true worship in spirit and in biblical truth because those who have been led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The false worship, you have been led not by the Spirit of God, but by the standards of your own dogmas, the standards of your own figments or fragments of imaginations, what you have been cooked up, not talking to be the mouth of the Lord. If you are the mouth of the Lord of a God, no need of any imagination for you except to learn the word in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and Rakak. Make a wide survey of the truth and give them the truth. That's what you will be the mouth of the Lord. There is really no need for us in any other things apart from that. There is nothing needed for us to think. And the reason why there is nothing needed for us apart to think from the word of the Lord of our God is that because he said, I have put my words in your mouth and go to learn the words and I will be thy mouth. No imaginations needed. We require only the truth. We require the text to preach now. We don't have any sorts of prophetic visions or prophetic things or even apostolic ways of life because he has given us now the completed can of scripture. We have them in the 66 books. Diligently, the sooner the better it is, we dig and take and learn the word of the Lord and make it up to become bakash. Make it up to become, to seek and to search. Because many nations, the strong nations, not just nations, but even the strong nations, as I said, I have delivered you out from the power of many strong nations in the, in the discourse of Joshua chapter 22 to 24. He teaches, I have delivered you from very strong nations. And now such strong nations, they shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem. And they pray before the Lord. The word pray is called that they will make up of all the fortification to be the disciples. So he says, Thus said the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. You know what a great privilege for the Jews. And now, that time they did not have the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, indwelling in them. But now we, the church, no difference between the Jews and the Greeks. So he says, when there is no difference between the Jews and the Greeks and all are one in church, you are called now to be the body of the living Lord of a God, the temple of the living Lord of a God. So since we are the temple of the living Lord of a God, we should be very, very thoroughly careful that how much more these unbelievers should catch hold of you to say, God is with you, God is in you, not just with you. And since Lord God is with you or in you, 
And since Lord is in us, sealing by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, until the day of redemption, to be the servants of the Lord God, how much more we need to be for the will of the Lord God? How much more we need to give up our time to the glory of Lord God. How much more we need to be the great and unique standards of the mind of Christ in the Lord God. We will be the men of most pitiable, as he said in 1 Corinthians 15. If we were here to believe in Christ only for the sake of the details of life, but you have not just called to be so, you are called to be something great wherewith the unbelievers could come and catch hold of you, seeking many strong nations to search Lord of a God, so that they could give this great life to say that Lord is in you. So they could give this great testimony and witness in the Lord. And yet today, The standards of the teachings in our pulpits are not a rakak, not wide survey of the truth in the original languages of the scriptures, therefore the people perish. They don't multiply. The fear of you hasn't fallen upon these unbelievers because you have a light shining in you. The fear of these unbelievers in coming and in search of the truth, they haven't come because you haven't first been found faithful to the will of the Lord. So dear brethren, just think, the life that you're living doesn't have to the standards of the mind of Christ. Dear brethren, be careful, because in order to fetch the wisdom of the Lord God, we need to have these following qualities. The quality is what he mentions in the life of every believer. If you are to be a bona fide gifted pastor teacher, he says, first, as Job 28, 12 and 13, where shall wisdom be found? Where is the place of understanding? Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither it is been found in the land of the living. And then furthermore, he emphasizes in verse number 14, saying that, the depth saith it is not in me, the sea saith it is not with me. We have expounded the scriptures for you already in the life of Job. And then furthermore we say, it cannot be gotten for gold, and it cannot be purchased for silver. So here he says for us that neither can be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of opair, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels or of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. So he says, from where will you get this wisdom? Where is the place of understanding? See, it is it been hid from the eyes of the living, the one who has not been born again. We expounded the scriptures long back. You can go and survey them. And kept close from the fowls of the air. Even the angels are rubbernecking to look and to learn what is the mind of Christ, what is the will of God the Father, because it has not been given for them. In fact, it has not been even revealed for the Jews in the past, but now, being babes, he has been given for us to learn about this mystery doctrine of the church age, which was not been there for them in the past. Because we have been now the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, for that cause, how will not an unbeliever would take hold of your skirt or if you, and they would say, God is in you. We have heard Lord God is in you. Guide us to the place of eternity. But looking upon your faces, they would say, you don't even have the light of the glow of gladness. You don't even have upon you the joy and the honor of the word of the Lord, and they would be really shocked and they will be really, well, ashamed of you to say that you're a Christian. 
The problem is you haven't understood the importance of the truth, the importance of the mind of Christ, the importance of the will of God the Father. So you have been living a life which is absolutely as dead souls, aborted souls. The souls which cannot see into the light, the souls which cannot conform themselves to the standards of the truth. You are as just as simple as that, dead souls. And since you people are still surviving a life which is of absolute standards of dead souls, it has not been given to the eyes of the living, it has been hid. That's it, natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. Being not grown up into a scribe, in doing the will of God the Father, people cannot understand to preach the truth in making disciples or grown-up disciples of all the nations in the Lord. You are as good as dead souls. You cannot learn the word of the Lord. You cannot understand the mind of Christ. You cannot realize the importance of truth. You are just as good as dead souls. So he emphasizes over here for us, seeing that it has been hid from the eyes of the living and kept close from the fowls of the air. The angels or satanic things, they cannot know the mind of Christ. Therefore, they want not you to learn the mind of Christ either. But God in his grace has sent his gracious mind to teach the word. It is a great joy for the king to conceal the matter. And when the servants open it up by searching diligently, it's a great glory to the Lord. You know, this is the fellowship and the relationship, what God has, how to illustrate that. Having the details of life not to be happy, when you get back home, you find your kid to be with you, searching and asking to you many things. What a great joy. That is the thing you have now. For Christ you have so many details of life. Maybe the people are not walking in accord with the truth and he tries to give you one more day, one more grace to teach you to, to learn and to make you to understand the things. But he cometh up and he finds you that you have not been in accord. He cometh up and he finds you that, he has not been, that you have not been established. And since you haven't done that, at least finding his own son or daughter, asking him some details, though being kid, at least he can find some relief. That's the thing God the Father is trying to establish his life or relationship with us. Because Satan doesn't know the truth, it has been concealed, because it cannot have to look the word. So it does not anyone to look into the truth, because it has been not made known. The Hebrew word over here, what we call kept close, it meant to say, as satar. Satar meant to say to conceal. And the word meant to say because if it cannot take the pressure, satar meant to say you cannot take the pressure. And since you don't have the authority of the word of the Lord of a God, you cannot renovate the standards of your thinking. So what is that pressure you can't take? Sitting and listening to the word of Lord God for more than one hour. As the people of the Jews, they wanted in the past, they be the eternal life. So they spent the time for minimum 10 hours a day to become the disciples and they learned the word of the Lord of a God with great care. So they took the pressure but over here you are not in a, able to take the pressure from the authority of the word of the Lord of a God though he says to renovate the standards of your thinking day by day. Since you are not able to take that pressure, it has been concealed. And Satan cannot abide in the truth. It doesn't have the truth. Therefore, there is no need for Satan to take that pressure. And thus, it loves to give you the silly, stupid details of life as living Christianity or to say this is the Christian way of life and it completely destroys you. Because it doesn't have the truth. It doesn't want you to be in the truth. Therefore, he says it has been concealed. It has not been clear, but it has been concealed, he says. It has been concealed in such a life, wherewith he emphasizes the point that this man, if they have to know the word of Lord God, they have to come by paying a great price in truth. So he teaches, dear brethren, destruction and death say, we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. God understandeth the way thereof, and he knoweth the place thereof. For he looketh to the ends of the earth, and seeth under the whole heaven. 
to make the weight for the winds and he weighed the waters by measure and the weight for the winds the spirit waters the word of god when he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning of the thunder then did he see it and declare it and he prepared it yes and searched it out and unto the man he said behold the fear of the lord that is wisdom and to depart depart the word depart is sore meant to say to break up your umbilical cord from the world or from the evil he says to depart from ra'a that which is distorted thinking in your head is called understanding so he says where we find the wisdom as such to the people they are not able to understand the inspiration from the lord god the divine inspiration of the lord god the spirit which has been given for us from the almighty lord god can make us to learn the truth so he says that the things pertaining to proverbs chapter 2 in verse number 4 that if you seek her as silver and search for her as a hidden treasure that is the word of god then shall the the, the understand the fear of the lord and find the knowledge of god again he said over there as the wise man in matthew chapter 2 now when jesus was born in bethlehem of juda in the days of herod the king behold there came wise men from the east to jerusalem saying where is he that born king of the jews for we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him and you know what it is a diligent search to be in the fear of the lord a diligent search to become the word of the lord again over there in matthew 12 42 about the queen of sheba he says she shall stand up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn why she stands up for katakrino to give you proper understanding of your judgment because for she came from the utmost parts of the earth that is from the extremity boundary of the earth to hear the wisdom behold greater than solomon is here and the same thing we look with a great example of acts chapter 8 verses 27 through 40 where with the ethiopian eunuch and then over here when we have been told that he was reading from the book of isaiah the spirit of the lord god said go near and join thyself to this chariot and philip ran that's the duty of us as pastor teachers you should be well prepared in season and out of season to declare the great and unique pale wonders of the word of the lord of a god he said philip ran and heard him read from the book of isaiah and said do you understand what you are reading and he said how can i accept some man should guide me the word guide is called to be hode goio that meant to say to lead in the path of a teacher guiding you in the truth as a leader as he is been to lead and the word hode gego meant to say the teacher of the ignorant and the teacher of the inexperienced today there are many who don't have the knowledge of the right exegetical standards they are inexperienced they are really ignorant today hode goge should be to the standards as we say particularly for the flattering titles of the men who are reigning in the pulpits first this men have to be trained well because it is the increase of the word of the lord of a god which shall make them rendering fit for the work of the lord first the word of lord god has to be multiplied then god the father would make those disciples to grow up so here he says when he was been said except someone could guide me meant to say i am a teach i am a i am a student being ignorant i am inexperienced in the scriptures so guide me and today if ever we begin our ministry it has to be in the realm of the pastor teachers who have been in the realm not knowing or not learning the things pertaining to the will and to the word of the lord so dear brethren he says and he desired philip that he would come up and sit you know the word desired is called to be parakaleo to call to address to speak the place of the scripture which he read was this he was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shearer so he opened not his mouth in his humiliation again the word humiliation is called to be 
tapainosis in his lowness, which meant to say, metaphorically, leading one to pursue and lament his littleness and guilt called to be spiritual abasement. So he says in the standards like depression or humiliation, he said that, though we are not ascribing to God those characters, but to tell you in anthropo anthropological things, anthropology. So he says, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life, again, Zoe life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? The Philip opened his mouth. That's what opening over here is called the word as ana oigio, to open his mouth. And what was that to open up his mouth? He says that Arkomai to do first to be a leader, his mouth and began to to begin at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus, and as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See here is water, what doth enter me to be baptized? And Philip said, If you believe with all thine heart, and you may, then you mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch. And he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, and that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing, but Philip was found in Azotas, and passing through the preached in all cities till he came unto Caesarea. So here, searching the scriptures like the way how eunuch was, like the way how King Sheba was, like the way how the wise men were, to look their life for salvation. So that's the way how we need to fetch. If you like anything he said in Romans chapter 10, but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart who shall ascend into the heaven, or that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the depth, or that is to bring Christ again from the dead. But what saith he, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. In James 1, 5, anyone like wisdom, ask of God, he shall give to all liberally, and abradeth not. And the word abradeth not over here, it meant to say, Onai dozo, to reproach, and then it shall be given. In James 1.17, every good and perfect gift from heaven which is coming is cometh down from the Father of lights. Again, the word light. And this Father of lights, with whom is no parallelio to have variableness, but he says, neither shadow of turning. And the wisdom that is from above is pure, peaceable, gentle, easily to be entreated. And that's what he gives to you without partiality, without hypocrisy, to have many good fruits. So how do you get it, dear brethren? You're going to get it provided when you're going to ascribe to Lord God that which is his righteousness. And the greater the time you spend on this earth, not to find the standards of the great righteousness of the Lord of our God, to say that greater marvelous are the works of the Lord God, and Lord God mightily does these things because he is just and true, and the things of the ways pertaining to Lord God are all the time true, to declare his righteousness among the nations so that these unbelievers also could believe in Christ and could be saved. And that's what we have been kept as an examination First, being well prepared, we can pass this examination. Being not well prepared, we cannot even be qualified for this examination. So how to get well qualified? First, to survey the scriptures. To go on to look the survey of truth in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic in the standards of this great scribal-oriented life. So the eunuch has passed the test. And the standards of the word what we call Queen Sheba will condemn you. And the wise men came all the way in search of the star. Today we just don't have the star, we have the light shining. The mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through the word of the Lord. Having been given unto us this great life, why is it you want to still die, sin unto that? Dear brethren, life is too short to spend our time 
not to confirm the word of the Lord on this earth. The greater the teaching goes on, the greater the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost goes on to teach. The greater it's our bona fide duty to learn the truth and to become the disciples of the word of the Lord. Dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide, because life is too short. And the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. But learn to remember, dear brethren, fearing men will not qualify us to the work of the Lord. We are called to survey in the standards of the word of truth to the praise of his glory. And the greater we spend our time in learning the word of the Lord of our God, the greater we could be well qualified as scribes. And as growing up into scribes, we can go and declare the things pertaining to the Lord's mind. So, dear brethren, the glory of him, Kabbalah, being a scribe, we need to do the will of the Lord. And at how many days more you don't want to be a scribe, and how many days more you want to be in the standards of which is not truth, just make it up in your survey of your life. And let's come back to serve Christ. If you have been appointed by the Lord, and if you have not been appointed by the Lord, make sure to understand the will of the Lord, because which is nothing but to feed the flock of the living Lord our God. In order to be feeding the flock of the living Lord our God, you need to be well prepared in the mind of Christ. Dear brethren, think over these issues. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory with His grace. So, with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In our will, telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is so very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest marks grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Where with you shall learn to acquire to possess not the truth, the truth shall set it free. And for the pastor teachers, the great Maharaj to carry Sothon Logan, herald the word in season and out of season, because the diamonds from my witnesses where it have been called. The number one diamonds from my witnesses in building Trinity, found the Bible in our hands. The number two diamonds from my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire and the will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless and marvelous infinite grace of my Lord. <laughs> Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great new privilege it is, O Lord, to understand that you have given us this rock of revolution to confirm your word in the churches and to multiply them according to the discipleship oriented work in order to pass the test which you have kept upon our shoulders in going and making disciples of all the nations. To this extent, Father, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us by this work so that we could make known to this world that you alone reigneth forever and forever. And though we make it known or not, Lord, you alone reign forever and forever as the scripture standard good because the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord and are not a mind to change or, or alter your words, but you are the same one so that we could learn the truth and we could make up our lives according to the standards of the truth. To this section, Father, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, will enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. Amen.